Unit 8, Lesson 15, Quartiles and Interquartile Range. Number 1. Suppose that there are 20 numbers in a data set and that they are all different. A. How many of the values in this data set are between the first quartile and the third quartile? Here's a simple example of what a data set would look like with 20 numbers that are all different and I've divided them up into the three quartiles. Quartile number one falls between the five and the six. Quartile number two is the median, which is between 10 and 11. And quartile number three is between 15 and 16. If you count the values in the data set that are between the first quartile and the third quartile, you'll find that there's a total of 10 values. B. How many of the values in this data set are between the first quartile and the median? Remember, the median is the second quartile, so just count the numbers that come between the first quartile and the second quartile. There's a total of five values between the first quartile and the median, or the second quartile. Number two. In a word game, one letter is worth one point. This dot plot shows the scores for 20 common words. A. What is the median score? The median score is 6 and 5 tenths. B. What is the first quartile or Q1? The first quartile is 5. C. What is the third quartile, or Q3? The third quartile is 8. Number 4. What is the interquartile range, or the IQR? The IQR is equal to quartile number 3 minus quartile number 1. Since Q3's value was 8 and Q1 had a value of 5, it's as simple as 8 minus 5. The interquartile range, or IQR, is 3. Number 3. Here are 5 dot plots that show the amounts of time that 10 6th grade students in 5 countries took to get to school. Match each dot plot with the appropriate median and IQR. First, I'm going to find the median for all the dot plots, and if I can't identify them just with the median, then I'll find the IQR. I've identified the United States median with the green line. It's at approximately 8. And below the United States is Canada's dot plot, and their median is a little bit less than 8. It looks like it's a little closer to 7. And below Canada is Australia's dot plot. This looks like it's halfway between 15 and 20. So the median for Australia is about 17 and 5 tenths. Again, I've marked the median with a green line. I've located the median for New Zealand's dot plot, and that looks like it's between 10 and 15, probably pretty close to 12, or 12 and 5 tenths. And finally we come to South Africa's dot plot. And the median for South Africa looks like it's exactly between 10 and 20. So the median for the South African dot plot is 15. Since all five of the country's dot plots have different medians, we don't need to go any further to match them up. Let's take a look. The United States matches up with the information from number 3, a median of 8, and an IQR of 4. Canada's dot plot matches up with number 4. It has a median of 7 and an IQR of 10. Australia's dot plot matches up with number 1, a median of 17 and 5 tenths, and an IQR of 11. 
New Zealand's dot plot matches up with number five, a median of 12 and 5 tenths and an IQR of eight. And South Africa's dot plot matches up with number two, with a median of 15 and an IQR of 30. Number four, Mai and Priya played 10 games of bowling and recorded the scores. Mai's median score was 120 and her IQR was five. Priya's median score was 118 and her IQR was 15. Whose scores probably had less variability? Explain how you know. Mai's IQR was only five compared to Priya's IQR of 15, so my scores must have been much closer together or much more consistent. Therefore, my scores had less variability. Number five, draw and label an appropriate pair of axes and plot the points. A equals 10 and 50, B equals 30 and 25, C equals zero and 30, and D equals 20 and 25. So I chose a graph paper with a lot of units on it and I decided to count by fives so that we can fit up to 50 units in this graph. I put the origin in the lower left hand corner so I'd have enough room. In green I labeled A. I'm going to start at the origin in the lower left hand corner and I'm going to move two spaces over, but if we're counting by fives, that would equal 10 units. After moving to the right, I need to move up 50 units. So I'm going to count by five and then stop when I get to 50. That's where I'm going to plot my point. Plotting B in red, I'm going to start at the origin and I'm gonna move 30 units to the right and 25 units up. Remember, counting by fives. Press pause and try plotting the last two points for coordinates C and D. Here's a look at the plotted point for coordinates C. And here's a look at the point for coordinates D. Number six, there are 20 pennies in a jar. If 16% of the coins in the jar are pennies, how many coins are there in the jar? The equation I wrote for this is 16% of x equals 20. In other words, 16% of an unknown amount of coins equals 20. And 16% means the same thing as 16 out of 100 or 16 hundredths. Of means times, or of means multiply. Bring down the x to represent the unknown amount of coins in the jar. And bring down the 20, which represents the number of pennies in the jar. If you want to try to solve for x on your own, now is a good time to press pause and do so. So let's take a look at it. 16% or 16 hundredths times x equals 20. We have to solve for x. Since we're solving for x, we have to get the x all by itself. Since 16 hundredths times x equals 20, then 20 divided by 16 hundredths will equal x. So I can rewrite the equation as 20 divided by 16 hundredths equals x. That might sound confusing, but it's no different than two times five equals 10, and 10 divided by five equals two. I like to use simple examples like that that I can do in my head to help me remember how to set these up. If it was confusing, rewind and listen to it one more time. 20 is the same as 20 over one. So now I can rewrite this equation as 20 over one divided by 16 over 100 equals x. 
Remember when we're dividing fractions, we really need to multiply by the reciprocal. So 20 divided by 16 hundredths is the same as 20 times 100 over 16. So 20 times 100 over 16 will give us the value for x. Multiply straight across. 20 times 100 is 2,000, and 1 times 16 is 16. So 2,000 over 16. That's the same thing as 2,000 divided by 16. And 2,000 divided by 16 equals 125. So x equals 125, or the number of coins in the jar is 125. There are 125 coins in the jar, 20 of those coins are pennies, 16% of the coins in the jar are pennies. Congratulations, you've completed Unit 8, Lesson 15, Quartiles and Interquartile Range. Mm -hmm.